welcome back. This is part 18 of our galactic history. I'm Lance White and I'm with Andrew Bartzis. How you doing? Hi. And we left off in, with a, a really intense conversation about the second fortification of the pyramids. So maybe we, you can pick up where we left off with the where it goes into the third yeah. the war galaxy scouts and the first invasion force capture earth earth sentience has no defenses it doesn't even know what war is so they're kicked off mm -hmm. some are kept as captures the dark guys bring in their initial technological things refortify earth on a technological level and then look at these pyramids and go we we win here there's they don't even know how to fight so they refortified the astral grid and made a second layer of pyramids, and that layer would be to create a barrier between who can incarnate here and who can't. Okay. That's, that's what they did. Earth was teleported so that the forces of light that wanted to get their planet back, they knew about they would get their, their, gear, their stuff in order, teleported into a vacant spot in the universe. Earth was heavily, heavily hurt by this teleportation. Mm. It, it was near death. And it gave out a cry to this universe and the 17 other universes out there. And trillions and trillions of species responded to that and began the migration pattern to Earth to heal it. Mm. The dark guys had about mm, 35, 45 million years equivalent, but Earth's time changes, so it really, you, you can't equate it. Mm -hmm. They had time where nothing was able to invade them and no one knew where they were at. And they were able to mass incarnate troops, train them, technologicalize them, and use the, the womb chakras of Earth to create DNA systems for warfare. Ugh. They then spread out in a rapid succession and captured thousands of planets and made a layer of rings of domination and control, which they were going to move Earth in the center of, and as their domination control spread, they would move Earth again and again and again and keep advancing the front. Earth was not in a condition to be teleported, but they still went out and started capturing. Wow. This is when the people that originally found the Earth, or refounded Earth said, there it is, we have to get there. And they started following the migration patterns of these energy spirits that were going to heal Earth. Uh -huh. And they were able to get in and get back into the system underneath this new grid of incarnation and incarnate within the forces of darkness to create a revolution with inside them. Because mm. that's the same thing the dark forces did when they incarnated back. It's always been to get the breeding patterns of there so that the consciousness of a collective over here can bond with the earth connect collectiveness and use earth for its original purpose. Mm -hmm. So it, earth was recaptured, but domination and control had been given to tens of thousands of planets but it's the time they recaptured it. The light recaptured the planet and went to go refortify the energy systems there. And then Earth rejected everyone and said, I need to heal on my own. And then teleported herself into a brand new undisclosed location where both forces started to look for it again. Wow. The Lemurians, the people that understood Earth needed time, had been sending their air cities that I've talked about in uh -huh. other places. Uh -huh into other realities with consciousness exploring devices that were looking for time travel energies based off mm -hmm. of Earth's changes. Mm -hmm. Well, they eventually figured out what it was and they arrived back and asked Earth that they could come back in and then you have the Lemurian society that mass incarnates to Earth after she's finished healing. Okay. That Lemurian species their air cities just came back in because they were leapfrogging back through time like I've described before. Because right, right. Earth had already created them. This is when the consciousness that was in this galaxy before the war galaxy came began to understood that this game that was being played here was going to go a really long time. <laughs> right. And they needed to have a mass incarnation of species from multiple universes to defend against this war galaxy and resolve all of the karma from the initial beginnings. Okay, so that takes us to um, the 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 that's the sec is that the second Lemurian? That's the first Lemurian race. Okay, they were destroyed when their technology and their spirituality didn't match. When they did, they were removed from that timeline, 
and Earth was teleported again. Therefore, anything that was time travel linked into Lemurian society had no link in time. Mm. Therefore, they were back stuck outside of time until they figured out how to get back into the planet and restore that. Mm. That's why there's three falls and the three falls of Atlantis. Wow. Because of the broken time links. Correct. Because they kept moving the planet. Oh. And, and every time they moved the planet, they reinfortified it so it was harder to get in <laughs> and harder to get out. Wow. Wow. And this is before the, um, the, uh, the system of, uh, ice of, uh, what's it called? Um, I've lost my uh, train of thought here. Uh, the, the, uh, put the protective band of, that keeps anybody from in and out. Okay, the quarantine. Quarantine, right. That was, was before. Was all other, other sentients are enforcing a quarant energy quarantine here. Okay, all right. Earth can enforce its own quarantine, but the control rooms aren't being used for that. Okay. That's how Earth rejected everyone. It, it used its own energy system to say, no, I'm healing. Okay, Go and ahead. then it created... The, its the, own first species. Its own first species, which was one species. One species. Okay, and do we know anything about what that species was like? The bigger versions of us. Okay. Taller, wider, more energy, um, 200 strand DNA. 200 strand. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And we're down to how many? A couple of strands? 42. Something like that, 48, whatever. It just. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because there are some people with even limited than that. We just don't have the consciousness to perceive DNA on that level. Oh, right, right. But but technically, the more strands you have, the more multidimensional access you have. Correct. To. When that first species was created and those people were asked to come in and incarnate into those skin suits, that's the founding of this idea that the Earth skin suit can go anywhere. Mm. Remember I've talked mm -hmm. about that it's got all the codes. Mm -hmm. Well, when you build a... A, a common suit that has all the sports car facilities inside it and then bring in all the people that have all the codes to it on top of the codes that it had already had from teleporting multiple times and then having mass species come and incarnating in before there was an incarnation grid you just have the perfect suit mm, right the perfect right. suit right now that how long did that uh the, uh, and as you said in an earlier moment, that didn't last long because Earth knew that yeah, that would be there as would, soon as the doors were open, they'd come. Right. And so, what happened after the first species? Uh, that first species lived here about two and a half, three and a half million years, right around. Uh, it's not really linear time that I can describe right, it. Right. It would be about, uh, I guess, ninety nine hundred ninety nine million years from that range. Okay. Okay. Um, there were dinosaurs on the planet, but they were a different type of sentience. They weren't here to interact with the war species and the light species and try to create peace. That's that was their ultimate function. That's who they actually asked to bring in. And all of those the ones that knew that were coming in, that you had a light force and a dark force that were going to descend at rapid pace and just tear up whatever's there because they want this planet. Mm -hmm. And they're not concerned about soul family because they're bringing their own soul families in. Mm. So did the dinosaurs know that they were going to be... Uh, no, they wanted the dinosaurs there because those were resources that they could send to other planets. Oh. Okay, so then what was the first uh, invasion of the original beings? Fifteen multidimensional beings. At the at this okay. where I'm, I'm saying, okay. this is here is where they become aware that there's this dramatic situation going on in the far part of the universe. Okay, okay. so right. they're way over there, bored right. because there's nothing left to do. They heard about this war thing and go, "What is it?" So they start traveling and traveling until they get to the point where all of their leftover pieces back there are the accordion stretched out. They have to bring them forward, okay. stretch the accordion out again and again and again until finally. Their little pieces go, oh my, look at this. <laughs> look at this. Yeah. You have species that are in this timeout, while Earth has said, no, you can't come and live on me. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. these multidimensional beings that finally accordion up and come into Earth as trees, plants, dinosaurs, eggs, rocks, whatever. So they make agreements with Earth because okay. Earth was still taking agreements. It's a different... Uh, layer of commerce okay and earth didn't really understand that these multi-dimensional beings were that stretched out oh and they began to get in and in and in just as a spiritual invasion before okay earth was 
captured by the dark. Okay. The, the multi-dimensional beings were in there and went, oh my God, teachers. And they oh. stayed as cells within there until they finally kicked out the dark guys, took over. Wow. The good guys come back in and think that the multi-dimensional beings are the bad guys. They kick out their surface guys, take over Earth. The multi-dimensional beings are stuck in, and they just sit there and just let it happen and manipulate the forces around there to keep battling over Earth. Wow. But they never got into the hollow Earth. They were only on the surface graduating timeline. Okay. And then the galactic ascension machine was formed, and the 66 prime dramatic planets were all teleported into a central solar system with, a, with our sun, mm -hmm. and they're like, does this get any better? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, when you brought up that image of the uh, multidimensional, the 15 multidimensional beings, uh, it brought up, an, uh, you know, stretching out like a accordion and then, you know, mm -hmm. going again, it brought up an image of Dune. The uh, beings, the worms, the yeah. worms that yeah, you know, the travel, yeah, uh, and so that's kind of, that. Who knows? That could have been yeah. All right. So then, the dark that had been battling and creating this gr ground and teleporting and doing all this stuff really set the stage for these fifteen multidimensional beings to sit back and watch, and then wait for their moment to uh, inc infiltrate. Mm -hmm. uh, but they did it through the, not necessarily through the beings that were there. They, now, not all of them incarnated. Correct. Right. Okay, so uh, only a portion of these 15 dimensional beings incarnated into the trees, the land, the rocks, what else? Mm -hmm. the, the beings that were there? And eventually the beings and, that were there. And breeding, interbreeding mm -hmm. with them so that they would become soul family. You got it. And they'd have the, D, the codes to the DNA. You got it. And then could start, you know, having playing the game at their the level. The God game, yes. That's and then the dark beings that had been, you know, having fun taking over and doing all these wars and the rest of it, uh, they saw these 15 beings as kind of probably like demigods or great teachers this, or something. This is the ironic thing uh -huh. competition. Oh, they did. They never it's... had competition in their war galaxy, they were the oh. best of the best. Oh. Competition. So, oh, so uh, so they were battling with the fifteen violently at times. Okay, so violently. This was a place of lots of massacres. Well, not in that particular manner. Um, the the fifteen multidimensional beings would literally go to battle versus some of the darks in an astral world that was you know hand to hand combat. Because they were brute forcing each other. Wow. But they couldn't beat beat the multidimensional beings because they were incarnated on Earth and had Earth sentience <laughs> behind them. Right. Which is a tool that the dark beings gave on a pyramid layer. So whoever mm -hmm. controlled the fortification process also had access to the Earth sentience to energize them in defense. Oh my. So they had all kinds of bases up their sleeves long right. before. So they didn't care about the battle. The battle was, it was they knew they had already won it. Yeah. And then that's it was all about incarnating and then kicking them out of the surface control and then waiting for somebody to come back and kick them out. Uh, because they were all incarnating their vibratory beings to take over the surface graduating timeline. Oh, uh, and, and at what point did that occur in the in the in the nine pyramid structure sequ sequence of events? Mm. About third or fourth? No, like fifth or sixth. Okay. Seventh, seventh is the fall of Atlantis. Okay. Second, second fall of Atlantis. Okay, second fall is the seventh. Wow. Yeah. This is starting, the pieces are it's starting to add just, together. Just, yeah. So each time there's a grid, there's a teleportation. Each time there's a teleportation, there's at the end of the old timelines. And all those beings that were coming back to get to that first species <laughs> had to start over again. Right. That's why there's 72 first species of Earth. Right, right. And, but they're all related. Correct. Because they all come from that, that system, that suit that was here to for everyone to take over. Wow, and ha had things been allowed to occur in a in a way that had not been interfered with by dark entities, uh, well, basically uh, that kind of life form would have been duplicated in in the in the womb chakras, and it would have been created as a positive and life force. It would have been more controlled and released instead of. All right, just mass invade with no warning, and the and the organic incarnational process would have included 
would have co would have continued. Right. And at what point did the Archontic grid get set up? Mid fifth. Mid fifth. Mid -fifth okay. So the fifteen brought the Archons in. Yes, they were. They actually had their own system of domination and control on other planets because they learned to play the game. Uh, so there's one system of domination and control in a cluster of galaxies here, and then the multidimensional beings said, all right, I can start a cluster here, a cluster here, a cluster here, a cluster here, okay. away from all these angelic forces that are battling them. Uh, and then and they just filtered in their resources. Right, right. And so... Um, so, uh, did the, how swift was the takeover of the incarnational process? It took a while. It uh, wasn't right. instantaneous. It, was it does take a while. Hundreds of thousands yes. of years, technically, to replace the the organic process with control systems right. and control grids. And each time Earth's energy was stepped down a dimensional energy, uh, they had to make whole new control systems. Then step it down more and make whole new control systems. Step it down and make whole new because you're compressing the energy into its densest form. Ah, okay, so by the time you get into the ninth uh, pyramid uh, layer... The last fortification. Your, the density of the planet has decreased to about third. lower third. So each time, because each time the density is lowered further, so each fortification makes it more difficult. And at what point um, were the... Uh, what, were we isolated and nobody quarantined? Could, quarantined, yeah. That, about 306,000 years ago. But it ended, and then there was a time travel war that brought it to 400,000, but that ended. So 300,000, we'll just say. All right. Way. But there were many issues where, instances where the quarantine grid wasn't supported the way it was supposed to be because the, multi, the, the, the good forces simply were out of power. Out of energy and they tired, just, right? And the dark eyes too. They they literally for a few million years they just stopped fighting. Okay. Okay, because they just couldn't do it anymore. And so uh, during that th few million years, when there was kind of like a, where they're kind of catching their breath and going for cocktails and mm -hmm. food, uh, was there a period of peace on the planet? Yes. Okay. The planet needed to heal again. Okay, so they could scar it all up again and right. start new. You know exactly. Okay. But they would always be the ones to start the battle. No, not necessarily. Not necessarily. The light, the light, the light reached out, use... reached out, and started the war. Lit the tinder match many times. Okay, all right. And that's where you get the, the, uh, the, the light beings that have gone to zealot mode. to zealot mode, which is an equally dangerous, correct, as the dark side that's in know, zealot mode. In zealot mode, so they're equally dangerous. Yes. On either extreme of the of the, uh, but they're all healable if they choose to get back to a free will source. They are all healable, yeah. and do they know that? Probably not all of them. The ones that are so far in the zealot stage, they can see nothing but zealotry. Will there be a moment when they will be allowed to see the other possibilities during this event period? And They'll be the ones if they determine to allow that to happen to them. Okay. Okay. And that's you out there that are listening. You have that choice, and you know it. And for the ones that don't know it, you're going to continue on doing what you do. Until it's no longer possible. So your services to... are no longer rendered, and you're given your pink slip and sent back for recyclement. And recyclement is a second death. That's right. So, you know, if you don't want to lose your, your consciousness and your awareness of these many billions and trillions of years of, you know, what's been happening, then it would be... Seems like it'd be a wise choice, uh, rather than being recycled, to join the join in the present game, right. which is the re which is finally allowing people to uh, ascend. They're going to give you other opportunities to go have fun somewhere else. Right, right, right. And so, so there can't be any uh, harboring of well, I'm going to pretend I'm going yeah. to pretend to join the forces of light. And then <laughs> There's the middle to... ground, remember? <laughs> There's the middle ground. It, it, light can't exist without dark, and dark can't exist without light, but they can both exist with neutrality. And the advantage that the dark forces have is that they're, they're masters of it. Yep. So they, know, they can modulate if they, if they know that they can play a new game and have fun at, at a some limited level mm -hmm. and teach about, you know... What they are. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. It could be quite a, an exciting role for the dark. That's and right. it would be it would end all that, the battling and the the mm -hmm. the, the more obvious uh, unsubtle levels of 
play. It could become a more subtle game and a more enjoyable game when you know that you're also benefiting. Exactly. Yeah. Of course, they know that they're benefiting us in some way by playing their roles, but this is a whole new layer or level of ascension for them as well. It could be... Service to self-ascension. Service to self-ascension. Ah, which we don't know philosophically. The Venusians have been arguing about this. <laughs> Uh, and we don't know yet if there will be a service to self-ascension. We don't even know what it means. It's all it, supposition. Yeah, but that seems like that would be a place where it could happen, or it could be a seed idea mm -hmm. in this uh, final graduation, because the Prime Creators come in and has uh, read all of the records of every, every sentient life form here. From the beginning to the end. From the beginning to the end, including all the permutations yeah. and, the, and the time wars. So that's, right. not a, that's not even a, a, a difficult task for, for Prime Creator. Nope. Prime and Creator of the universe. Of the universe, right. Which is the same Prime Creator of every galaxy, just in different smaller pieces. Okay. Avatar, pieces, part. Avatar, pieces, part. Avatar, pieces, part. And the avatar is like a central hub. Okay. Okay. That controls the numbers of pieces, parts that feed data to the avatar, and the avatar feeds data to other avatars who are collectives. Huh. And when does it become a? When do you? It's be a neural network. It's all interactive. Okay. When does it become? When do you know that you're real? <laughs> when do we know that we're real? When we're born? We come out of the womb? And we have our own omnidirectional field separate of the ambionic sac of the mother? Uh -huh. But we were all we were we were sentient uh, beings prior to sentient beings with a skin suit in the time frame. Okay. So, be, but before you enter into the body, uh, you you're know, you're infinite. You're infinite. You're infinite with in no time. With no time, in, which is where you operate. In no time. In no time. Yes. And which is where we are all operating mm -hmm. in no time, which is. Uh, something that once we become aware of the fact that there is no time, it's a social agreement, it breaks down. Yeah. <laughs> How many of these episodes, 25 minutes seems like five? Oh, most of them. of them? <laughs> Almost all of them. There might have been one that, that kind of dragged along into about 15 minutes. But, uh, we're yeah. chewing. <laughs> yeah, right. right. So, yeah. Okay. Um... So now we've covered the. Uh, well, I'm, now I'm kind of lost. Where where are we at in terms of the? Fourth. We're at the fourth pyramid. Grid. Grid. Okay, pyramid grid. The return of Lemuria. Okay, which is the return, the first return. We're back through time travel, air cities that I described about in the previous episode. Okay, the, uh, that's the first return of Lemuria. First return of Lemuria. The fourth pyramid. The first rays. First. First rays? Okay. First rays. They poof, oh. we're here, we're back. Oh, okay. We're in Earth's dream world. They already have contracts with Earth from the future. And they set up a society, reuse the the womb chakras, okay. recreate a commerce that ultimately feeds the light sources so they can continue battling the dark forces. The whole while the multidimensional beings are like, Oh, let's just wait and see what happens. All right. We're gonna have a little fun. Right. Okay. right. They are in subtle control of the incarnation grid, not full control. Okay. Okay, right. Because okay. Uh, the, the, the subtle control occurred around the fourth uh, pyramid, and then at the mid-fifth is when the Archons came in Correct. with their whole structure already. Correct. With soul, uh, fine print with the soul contracts and, and... All that. And not letting... Okay. All right. So let's leave off at the fourth pyramid and the return of Lemuria. Okay, that sounds good to me. Are we taking a break? Yes, we are. Awesome. All right. <laughs> we will be back.